The Burnout franchise is a favorite of mine. I may not be super vocal about it, but there's a unique fast-paced arcade racing game itch that I found can only be scratched by these games. Other racing games may ask me to be dangerous and risky out on the roads, but Burnout games want me to be an absolute menace. Turning my vehicles of choice into a vehicular weapon of mass destruction with takedowns, crash breakers, speeds that have me barely in control, and above all else, dominating the competition while doing it all. The Burnout games that I had played before this list got updated, those being Burnout 3, Takedown, Revenge, and Paradise, have all done an amazing job at letting me be that menace on the roads. It was thinking back on those games, coupled with me looking through my PCSX2 library one day, that I saw a Burnout game that I had added but not played yet. At least, I think. A game that I had heard bits and pieces of, and one that I think I played for a bit a long while ago when I was a kid? maybe, but one that I had effectively no experience with at that moment. And after giving it a try on stream for what was effectively the first time, even if my memory is serving me right in saying I did play this briefly as a kid, I knew that I had to make a video on it. Let's take to the roads to cause vehicular mayhem once more and do some hard, relentless, fierce dominating too with Burnout Dominator. Burnout Dominator was released for the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation Portable in March and April of 2007, depending on what specific region and platform you're talking about. This review will be covering the PS2 version. Despite what the splash screen says, this game was not made by Criterion, instead being developed by EA UK. To me, Burnout Dominator is like Burnout Greatest Hits. Dominator blends in various elements from the games that came before it, such as car and gameplay mechanics, along with having its own unique features and cars that make it stand out among the other entries. When you start up a new save, you'll see that the events are divided up into different series. Each series features a specific group of cars that all have roughly the same stats to ensure fairness, and the deeper into the game you get, the faster the cars become. The cars in this game are a mixture of original ones unique to this game, and ones from previous games. The Custom Coupe Ultimate from Burnout 2, the Euro Circuit Racer from Burnout 3, the Factory GT from Burnout Revenge, and ones unique to this game such as the American Drifter and American Classic to give a few examples. Oddly enough though, Though, on the note of the stats, you're never directly told what they are. The stats from previous games weren't ever super in-depth, consisting of just a couple of stats bars or numerical values, but for there to be no stats at all is a little confusing. It's not a game-breaking thing at the end of the day. I never ran into a problem of not being able to complete an event with my specific car of choice. Every car is able to perform at every event here, but the absence of visual stats is still a little confusing. In any case, once you pick your series and car, it's time to hit the roads, which brings us to to the event types. In Burnout Dominator, there are nine different event types that you'll come across. Race, Road Rage, Eliminator, Burning Lap, Grand Prix, Maniac Mode, Drift Challenge, Near Miss Challenge, and Burnout Challenge. Races are what you would expect, completing anywhere from one to three laps around a circuit with the aim to be in first place. Road Rage, my personal favorite mode in not just this game, but in Burnout as a whole, has you taking down as many opponents as possible before the timer runs out or you get totaled. Eliminator events knock out the driver in last place every 30 seconds until there's only one person left. Burning Lap is a time trial where you complete a lap as fast as possible. Grand Prix have you competing in three races with each of them giving you points, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. Maniac Mode asks you to drive dangerously on the roads to increase your score, with there being a Dominator variant in which, upon completion of an event like that, unlocks a vehicle for the final series in the game, that being the well, Dominator series. Drift challenges have you drifting to score, near miss challenges have you getting score for near missing traffic, and burnout challenges have you chaining burnouts together from boosting the score. Wait, chaining burnouts? Like from the older games? Yep, the burnout mechanic from the first two games returns here, where you can chain together boosts by performing dangerous actions out on the road. There is a big change to the burnout mechanic here, however, in regard to the score-based modes. In modes like Maniac Mode, Drift Challenge, Near Miss Challenge, and Burnout Challenge, you get score for performing the necessary actions. If you've got burnouts going, though, your score can receive big boosts. The higher your current burnout chain is, the more score you'll get. These burnouts become crucial later on in the game with the higher score requirements. That being said, burnouts are still very 
useful for the other modes. Not only is continuously boosting beneficial in modes like Road Rage making car combat easier, it's also beneficial to keep the lead and to chase after opponents ahead of you. The AI in this game is very much capable of performing their own chains of burnouts, which results in moments where the opponents ahead of you will maintain their pace for a little bit. Unlike in other games where opponents maintaining the lead, or just the spot ahead if not first place, may feel cheap as a result of brutal rubber banding, in Dominator, I never felt like the opponents maintaining their lead was cheap. It helps that the rubber banding never allows the opponents to reach top speeds that you can't, at least from what I experienced in my playtime. Or maybe it's balanced to where they can, but because the AI slows down just enough to allow you to catch up if you're far behind, I didn't notice it. Regardless of the logistics, the AI in this game is fair, but it also helps that because of the burnout mechanic, it feels more plausible for the AI to be chaining their own burnouts, thus maintaining their high speeds, and thus maintaining their lead. The AI are also no slouches when it comes to combat, either. The opponents will absolutely put up a fight when push comes to shove. Shunts, slams, grinding, they're not afraid to get physical. But you're not just gonna take it all and submit like that, are you? This game is called Burnout Dominator for a reason. It's time for you to flex a muscle and take control. It's time for you to do the shunting, the slamming, the grinding, and ultimately causing your opponents to explode from your dominating. The car combat in this game feels amazing. Although I do miss being able to shunt traffic cars into opponents as traffic checking is absent in Dominator, everything else about the car combat is awesome. I particularly love the fact that crash breakers are always enabled in every event this time rather than in select ones like in Revenge. There's an additional aspect to the takedowns in this game through the signature takedowns. Signature takedowns have been in games before with Burnout 3 and Revenge, where if you take down an opponent at a specific location, you'll get special recognition for it. Dom Dominator takes it a step further, with the signature takedowns here having gameplay changes now as well. During your time playing, you'll come across these shortcuts slash alternate paths that are blocked off. If you take down an opponent against these barricades, or just so long as their wreckage hits the barricades, the takedown itself doesn't even need to be done there, you will have performed a signature takedown and unlocked the shortcut slash alternate path as well. At first, I actually wasn't that big of a fan of these signature takedowns, but I will fully admit that my negative perception at first was due to me getting unlucky a bunch of times when trying to go for one. And then my stream on Monday, October 21st happened. Uh, from Revenge and Takedown. Um, and then they, uh... Wait, what, what signature... Did anyone see a car just there? Or was that signature Takedown the re... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, I'm so confused. I mean, I'll take the signature takedown, I'll take it. I'm so confused though. What car did I wreck into to get that? Looking at the clip, the blue car you took down also crashed to the barriers a second later. Oh, really? So you don't have to crash a car into the barriers for the signature takedown so long as their wreck, regardless of where you take them down, makes it? Oh, really? I could have sworn it was you had to like take them down, like slam them against that particular like barricade of like, of like a wall there for that. I didn't know that just so long as the wreckage was there. Oh, huh. The more you know. But I can definitely get to bronze before, before I sustain too much damage here for revenge. We can definitely. Okay, chat, I think I need to go get a lottery ticket after this. Why has my luck for the take for the signature takedowns improved by like tenfold? I <laughs> Gotcha, baby. Make that what is that? Signature takedown 3 or 4 now? I am on a fucking roll, dude. Let's go. God forbid that that God forbid that the player has fun. Chat Chat, 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 We are gaming. We are goaded. We are gaming. That's another one in the books, baby. Jot that down. Write that down. That. So, having gotten all of those signature takedowns, plus some more on my other save file I used for recording gameplay for this video, I've had a change of heart. I now think that the signature takedowns are actually pretty cool. It's a neat innovation here, taking something that was previously cosmetic and having it affect gameplay as well now. It's also a blessing that I had that stroke of luck during the stream, since looking back on it, I feel like I would have gotten some sh from some of you after you heard, wham, the signature takedowns are too luck based, wham. Secondary objectives can occasionally show up during some of the events too. These 
side objectives will ask you to do things like achieve a certain amount of points through near misses, burnout chaining, drifting, taking down a specific opponent a number of times, and more. What I like about these side objectives is that, aside from the taking down the opponent car side objective, where it's a bit luck-based depending on how well or poorly your target may be driving for the event, all of the other ones ask you to show off your skills, to show off your mastery that you've obtained at that point in time. All of these elements combine into the Dominator point system. At the end of an event, a tally of all the things you did is calculated. Winning an event, achieving a secondary objective, unlocking a trophy, which is a list of things to do during your playthrough as a whole, and more give you Dominator points. Dominator points are used to unlock the different series in a game. Once you unlock the final series, the Dominator points just become a personal score to increase. Going back to the note of takedowns, whenever you get taken out or slam into a traffic car or wall, you have a chance to bounce back with a full boost bar by either hitting someone with your wreckage with aftertouch, or by catching someone in your crash breaker explosion radius. You will need to be careful though, as if you use up your crash breaker and don't get anyone, you'll respawn with an empty boost bar, which will result in a very slow recovery time as you get back up to speed. On the note of the boost, whenever you're using just the regular boost, not the supercharged one, you can't gain any of it back as you're using it, which further incentivizes that you save up until you get the supercharged boost. With the speeds increasing as you get deeper into the game, you'll have to manage that boost more carefully. In modes like Race and Road Rage, for instance, you can be a little more strategic when it comes to your supercharged boost, as it might be better to let your boost go briefly to navigate a tricky corner, for instance, get some drifts or near misses, then get the supercharged boost going again. For the score-based ones, though, you just gotta press down on whatever button you're using firmly and never let go. That aspect of being in just enough control to give you a chance of making it through in one piece, but not so in control that the tension goes away, is a work of art in Burnout Dominator, as well as the other Burnout games. The sense of speed from the visuals is amazing, most notably the camera zooming in as you're approaching the end of a supercharge boost, but if you build up enough to get a chain going, the camera zooms back out again as if you're being pressed against your seat, and then you've got the audio playing its part, the whooshing of the wind as you near miss traffic, the screeching of tires as you drift around corners, the higher pitch tone of the engine with a supercharge boost compared to a normal one, it all combines to create a fantastic experience. And, to top it all off, the physics of the cars match the designs of the tracks beautifully. I normally make it a point to address this first and foremost in any racing game reviews, but I made an executive decision here because... I don't know, because I could. In any case, the game has more nimble cars that are able to react faster to things like tight turns, dodging traffic, etc. The tracks that you drive on have a good mixture of tighter, more condensed roads, along with sections that are wide, accommodating the extra room that may be needed for the increased speed, especially with the supercharge boost. There's plenty of room in turns to initiate drifts, most notably the turns at Bushido Hills. There's extra room on either side of the road to hug the wall to dodge traffic, in most cases anyway. We'll get there in a minute. You're able to go from one side of the road to the other, you're able to go from one lane on either side of the road to being in the middle to rack up near misses, this game plays beautifully. I've said it once before, I'll say it again here. The physics of the cars and the roads that you drive on need to complement one another in order for the game to play well. Otherwise, it's going to be a rough experience, a la Most Wanted 2012 with the heavier feeling cars mixed with the tight city streets that demand fast reaction time. Reaction time that the cars just aren't able to achieve in that game. Here in Dominator though, they are able to achieve the necessary reaction time, and as a result, like I said just a second ago, the game plays beautifully. Of course though, not everything in Dominator is perfect. Although my list of complaints for Dominator is small, I do still want to point them out. First off, while the large majority of the tracks in Dominator play well, there are two that stand out to me as being a bit rough to experience. Autobahn and Tuscan Hills. Autobahn is less problematic for the lower speed series, as you're going slow enough to be able to dodge traffic in those tight lanes and to maneuver yourself through the toll booths just fine. It's when you get to the higher speed series, most notably the Dominator series, where you're going to be crashing a lot due to the blind turns, tight lanes, and those damn toll boots. Like, who the hell thought this was a good idea? Even if they're not as much of a pain for the lower speed series, who thought this was all right? Secondly, Where's Crash Mode? Crash Mode has been a staple of the Burnout franchise, so much so that there's a decent part of the Burnout fanbase who play these games for the Crash Mode. So Crash Mode's absence here is very noticeable. Thirdly, out of all the secondary objectives you can do, having to take down a specific opponent three times is a little excessive in my eyes. I'd say one for the beginner series or the first half of the game, and then two times for the later series, the second half of the game would be all right. Or maybe two takedowns across the board. In any case, three is a bit 
much for my taste, especially given that you often have to purposefully give up your lead if the opponent you need to take down is regularly lagging behind. It can get a tad bit annoying to have to give up the lead, then get in position to take down the opponent, then oopsie, the opponent crashes into a traffic car, so you have to slow down even more because it's going to take them a second to respawn and catch back up, and then you may take a swing, but then you crash into a traffic car, so you're the one needing to take a second to respawn. <sighs> Lastly, I feel like Grand Prix events don't give out enough Dominator points for the work that you do. In a similar way that you didn't get enough stars in Revenge, doing multiple races back to back only to be paid in a single event's worth of them, you only acquire a single event's worth of points in Dominator's Grand Prix. That's it for my complaints about the game though. Like I said earlier, it's a pretty small list, which I think is a testament to how good Burnout Dominator is. Overall, Burnout Dominator is an excellent Burnout game that I would highly recommend if you're a fan of this franchise. Hell, even if you're just a fan of racing games in in general, I would recommend that you give Dominator a try. Great feeling cars, satisfying car combat, a good progression system, lots of different event types to choose from, it's all here. If you've got that itch to be not just dangerous on the roads, but an absolute menace out there, Burnout Dominator, as well as the Burnout franchise as a whole, will be able to scratch that itch well.